Welcome to the driveway garage. Hey, I kind of shaved since my last video. I hardly ever shave. I usually just take my hair clippers and don't put an attachment on there and run it over my whiskers. That way I always look like I have a five o'clock shadow, not like I'm a bum. Anyway, I'm gonna do a walk around on this uh, 2013 Subaru Outback I just bought a couple days ago. In case you're thinking about buying one. There's not going to be everything included in this video, but it'll give you a general idea of what it's like. My wife has a 2020 Subaru Crosstrek. They're pretty similar. That's her second Crosstrek. And I love driving it. The main reason is the cruise control, which I'll show you. So, <clears throat> it's got a nice color. I think it's silver, but it almost looks like a light blue. It's got nice aluminum wheels on it. The guy I bought it from is wanting to buy a brand new Toyota Camry, no, RAV4, <clears throat> and he wanted the money for a down payment, so I got a good deal on it. It's a 2013 Limited, and I got it for $7,500. Of course, you know, it's 10 years old, it's not perfect, but it's in pretty nice shape. I'm going to probably polish the headlights up. And how I do that is 1,000 grit, 2,000 grit, 3,000 grit wet sandpaper, and then some polishing compound. And they turn out pretty good. It's got uh, fog lights, which is going to be nice. I hardly ever use them, but aluminum rims, really good tires from Costco. Um, it's got the plastic cladding along the bottom, kind of gives it a nice look. This is the key fob. You got your lock, unlock. Oh, tailgate, I guess. It'd be nice if it had automatic start, but it doesn't. I drove it back about two hours from the place I bought it, so it's a little dirty right now. This windshield's got some definite prints on it from probably washing the window, the bugs, and then dirt been really windy the last few days so just dirt's been blowing everywhere all right here's the driver's door you got your lock and unlock buttons now if you have some somebody in your car you don't want them rolling the windows down you can push that and lock the window controls now, I'm not sure on this vehicle because I haven't used it yet but normally you can still roll up and down the driver's window but not the rest of them but it, I used to transport foster kids and Little kids like to play with the windows, so I would always lock them in my other cars just so they can't sit back there, especially like three or four year olds. You don't want them rolling the window down. You never know what might happen. And it's got plastic on the, actually, I thought it was hard plastic, but it's kind of a vinyl, soft. This is perforated, as my son and I like to joke around. It's perforated with holes. Got a cup holder. I've got some napkins in there. Let's go into the seat. This size leather. I don't know. I can't even tell you if it's real leather. I'm going to assume the bottom is. Usually the sides are more of a pleather than a leather. Side curtain. Airbags. This one has electric seat. And I'm going to assume that button is the lower back support. I haven't played with that one yet. So you can tilt the back of the seat with this lever. Actually, tilts the whole seat. Huh. This one will slide the seat forward and backwards, up and down. This, this one's kind of dirty. I'm going to have to break out my vacuum. I just bought it. I haven't done anything to it except install a trailer wiring harness kit. So let's hop in the vehicle see what we have here. You got your mirror controls. You turn that to the right, you can adjust your right mirror. In the case of this vehicle, on the right mirror, it doesn't go down with this button. So you have to adjust that manually. But it'll go up and side to side, but not down. And then you rotate it to the left, you can adjust the driver's side mirror. These are your dash light controls as far as brightness of the light, if you want them brighter or dimmer. And this one's a little different than my wife's Subaru. If you want to set the parking brake, you just push that button and it's electric. And you'll hear it 
make a little humming sound and now it's locked the back brakes are locked and then when you pull on it it unlocks them but I think you actually have to start the car to unlock it I tried yesterday and it wasn't working and there's a button here and it's a picture of a car on a hill so I'm assuming that's like hill lock so if you're on a hill your car's not gonna roll backwards when you're waiting traction control button down here your hood release down into there someplace um, gas tank release right there let me shut this door be a little quieter your headlight controls right on the blinker knob you've got your automatic that's gonna be probably park lights oh that's just off I guess you don't want your headlights on automatic I just leave them there that would be your fog lights and then you can just turn your headlights on if you want I'll just leave it in automatic my wife has a similar control here and this one I haven't figured out because it didn't really seem to do too much when I was clicking on this up and down thing but, uh, I'm gonna start this up of course the key goes over here this one doesn't have a push button watch the dot dash all the gauges turn and then they uh, set to wherever they need to be the navigation and the stereo it's warming up up on the front there you've got the temperature control the miles per gallon average and also the time this one I have a phone holder up there on the dash your stereo controls are here on the steering wheel you've got your volume preset station so whatever you have set in there you can change and then mode if you want to go AM FM XM radio CD and when you start your car you have to agree and then it'll do its thing yeah yeah I'm not removing the SD card right now I'll show you that feature here in a second too does have a CD player you got your info button I'm not going to get in depth on all that stuff. I'm sure other people will probably do it or I might do it later. It does have navigation and there's an SD card. Put your finger in that little slot there. Ah, boy, that's not working so good today. Yesterday I popped it right out of there. Anyway, you put your finger or screwdriver right in there, fingernail. You can pop this cover off and there's a connector for it kind of looks like a phone charger there's also an SD card in there so you can update I think the navigation then that just snaps back in place uh, the radio just go to audio and then you can decide you want AM FM satellite or CD and they had a three-month subscription to satellite radio so I signed up for that yesterday so now when I'm driving around I always have music to listen to which is kind of nice they'll start you off at like six and a half dollars but it always seems to go up and up till pretty soon you're paying like seventeen dollars a month this is the on off button which is kind of weird my wife's on off over here in volume this one it's on and off on the right and volumes over here and then your preset buttons and then, let's see, I'll turn the volume down. Yeah, this one you can change between the channels. And display, you can change the contrast, change the brightness, night on, night off. Oh, you can even turn it completely off. I thought that was the night off, but it's not. Now what do you do? How do you turn it back on? Interesting. I'll have to figure that out. Your air conditioning controls are down here. Now it's got separate controls for the passenger side or the driver's side. Or you can just do, like right now it's not in dual mode. So let's see, automatic. I think 
So in dual mode, both people can change their settings. You shut that off and the driver controls the settings. So you got automatic off. If it's really dirty outside like it was when I was bringing this car home, I push this button and then what that does is just circulates the air inside the cabin so you're not sucking in all that dirty air. You got your front defrost, so it'll just blow all the air up to the defrost if you're trying to thaw your windows out faster. And then the rear defrost, that's electric of course. And then you can turn your air conditioner on and off with that button. It's got a cigarette lighter down here which I plug my phone charger into. You've got four vents going across the dash, one over there, two in the middle, one over there. And the nice thing is you can turn them all on or off manually. So if you don't want some cold air blowing on you right there, you can shut that off. <clears throat> Let's go up here to the ceiling. Now this one has a sunroof. So there's two different controls. Now manually, you open the sunshade. And then you can push this button, and the, the sun visor, our sunroof just vents open. You can shut that. And if you want it to slide back, push that one, and the sunroof will slide all the way back. I guess it's either open or closed. So you just push that button. And then this one will control your lights. If, let's say you're inside, you're looking for something. You can just turn that on, have light. Otherwise, it's going to turn on when you open your door. Now, this is your, this has some cool features. This is the lane departure, and you can shut it off. But if you get over the white line or the yellow line, it'll start beeping at you to let you know you're swerving off the road. And then this one is your uh, crash. It'll stop you from hitting something. If there's a car in front of you stopped, you don't notice it this will notice it the car will notice it because of these two cameras up here and it'll bring you to a screeching halt and if you pull in your garage too fast it'll do the same thing it'll slam on the brakes you also have three garage door security gate features you can pro uh program into this so when you come home just push that and the garage door open and then it's got an automatic dimming light and I'm pretty sure that's what these buttons do on and off for the automatic dimming light. Now this one is the best feature that I like about uh, my wife's car and this one. One of the reasons I bought it. If you're driving a lot, it's got a camera here, a camera here, and they monitor the road in front of you. And when you set your cruise control, it will lock on the car in front of you. And if they slow down, you slow down. They speed up you speed up but it will not go any faster than you set your cruise control for so if you set it for 60 and they slow down to 40 it'll slow your car down you don't have to hit your brake reset your cruise and then when they speed back up it just stays right with them now another thing you can this is the on off button for the cruise control and you can see right there it shows that it's on and it's got three bars there so it will keep you approximately three car lengths away from the car in front of you but if you push this button that'll change to two bars and if you push it again it'll change to one so if you want to follow somebody pretty close you can do that another thing i really like about the cruise control is whatever speed you're driving let's say it's 44 miles an hour and you push the set button it will keep your car at 44 miles an hour but if you click it down again, it'll drop to 40. Or if you were to click it up, it would just go to 45. And then after that, every time you click this button, it'll change five miles an hour. So let's say you're going 45, you're going through town, you get out of town on the highway, you want to go 60, you just click that three times, and now you're going 60 miles an hour. Most cars, they only change one mile an hour. So you either have to speed up with your gas pedal, then reset it. But this one, you know, just a few clicks and you change your speed quite a bit. Shut my sun visor again. It does have mirrors on both sides, of course. The vanity mirror with the light. Big thing I like about this car, if you look at the sun visor, 
compared to my Honda CRV over there, which has no extension. So you always have this gap here where the sun comes in and hits you in the side of the face and the eyes. I don't like that. So this one has two extenders. You can go out that far and go out that far. And you can move that up. You don't have any sun coming in hitting you in the face up here. I really like that feature. Big, it's a big thing when you drive a lot because I don't like the sun coming in reflecting off my glasses and hitting me in the eye. Now, gear shift is down here. Of course, you got to push your foot on the brake, put it down in the gear. Now you can slide it to the left and you can control it with the paddle shifters. Up shift over here, down shift right behind your steering wheel. So you can kind of drive it like a manual. Now you see the brake lights on the dash that's because I set the parking brake so now if we, now that the car's running huh, I haven't researched this but so now I put the car in gear it won't go anywhere because of that let's put my foot on the brake oh yeah I heard a little humming noise in the back and now the parking brake is off so I guess in order to shut the parking brake off you have to actually put it in the gear to do it. Also has two cup holders here. And they got little springy things here to keep some tension on the cup. On the other side, of course, you got your glove box. It's pretty roomy. Another cup holder, little storage compartment. Driver's side, or passenger side, window control, door locks. Of course, your handle. Uh, the seats are real comfortable. Now it does have a two-stage storage compartment in the center. There's two levers under here. The smaller one opens just the top. You could keep, I don't know, notepad or credit card, whatever you might want right there. Then you shut that. Then you've got a nice deep storage compartment. It's got a hookup for USB uh, around maybe a phone charger. And then your 12 volt outlet there for the phone charger. Lots of room there. Uh, what else can I tell you about the front? I think that's about everything. Um, I might be missing something, but I've only owned it a couple of days. I probably don't even know everything. Oh, windshield wipers. They're right here, of course. If you want to wash a window, you just pull that towards you. And then you can turn them on by pulling it down and then this will adjust the speed of your intermittent windshield wiper whether you want it faster or slower now my CRV I have it's a, I don't know which model if it's an LX or what it is but you can't adjust the intermittent it's just it'll come on wait a few seconds then come back on at least most cars like this one you can adjust it you want it faster or slower and then this outside knob is for the rear window so you can turn it one way and it'll spray some water on the back window and then turn it the other way it'll turn it on if it's raining hard um let's see door lift gate trunk open i guess i didn't get it shut tight when i was working on the uh, wiring harness this button right here is for your odometer so this has 138,000 miles on it and it's on trip A oh that's weird that's changing the dash up there 22.5 average probably if I was driving it'd show me my instant mileage nothing ah okay that's good to know the button over here is for the dash, I guess. Trip B, 990 miles. Trip A, 134 miles. That's how much I've driven it since I bought it. And also, let's see. It'll show you your miles per hour there when you're driving. It's nice that it lets you know that your door, one of your doors is open so you can fix that problem. And then this top getting top line there with the MPG that'll tell you your miles per gallon and from driving it it seems like if you're just driving normal it's right in the center there's no yellow lines to the left 
that means you're using up more gas than normal. And then if you're going downhill, I notice the line goes over to the right, which means you're getting above average gas mileage. All right, we'll shut that baby off. Let's see what else we have on this car that I can show you. One of the main reasons I bought this is because of the four wheel drive. Actually, it's the, the yeah, the biggest reason. Now I could have bought a lot of four wheel drives, but Subaru makes a super good four wheel drive. My wife's Crosstrek, when I was transporting foster kids, I had to drive from Omak, Washington, which is a hour and a half from here, pick up some kids and I had to take them across the mountain pass over south of Seattle. And it was like the worst blizzard I've ever driven in. I didn't even feel comfortable driving these four kids, but I had to take them to a new home. And I dropped the kids off and I was driving through a foot, foot and a half of snow and raining like crazy on top of that. I got around no problem. And then I got back to the interstate. I started driving home, which is about a two hour drive, and they closed the interstate. So I had to wait a little while for them to get the semis off the interstate because they were just parking everywhere. Then I filled up at the gas station and I turned around and drove back towards Seattle on Interstate 90, unplowed roads, foot, foot and a half of snow, drove to Seattle and then I headed up through Stevens Pass the other direction, hoping that was still open. Well, I knew it was open, but uh, I'm passing semis that are trying to go that way. And of course they're going like 20 miles an hour because there's a foot or two of snow. There's like two and three foot drifts in the middle of the road where they plowed it and the cars have push the snow and that Subaru just went through every snow drift I went through to it never slipped a tire never missed a beat and I passed all these semis I was only going 45 trying to be safe but they're going creeping along at 20 and that car ran so good in the snow it was just crazy that's the reason I love Subaru so much anyway so if you have to drive in the winter if you have to drive in snow Get yourself a Subaru. They are the best. Now this is the back door and evidently something damaged the top here. I don't know if they had a dog or a cat that chewed it up or something, but he just put a piece of black tape over it, which is fine for me. I use this for deliveries. It doesn't have to be perfect. I can see I need to do a little vacuuming up here too, but you got your back seat. Now the front seat is comfortable for me and I get in the back seat. I'm six foot one. And look, I still got space two inches, three inches between the seat and my knees. And, turn the camera around. I still have, looks like six inches of headroom here. So I could wear a cowboy hat if I was inclined. Um, this is just a little storage net my wife gave me. I, I don't use it because, uh, well, it's being used right now. This is something I found in the car. But for me to reach behind me and try to grab something, not going to happen. Bad shoulders, bad back. But I just left it in here in case there's something I want to put in there for emergencies. And I'm, I have a case full of CDs. Maybe I'll put that in here just so it's not sliding around on the floor. But you've got handles on both sides. So when you're getting in and out, it gives you something to grab. Also, it's got little hangers if you had to hang some clothes up. You got your light in the back here, but you can turn it on. This comes on when the door, it'll come on when the door's open. Or you can shut it off if you want the door open and no light. Um, I, I noticed the passenger side has a little net there, so you could store something back there if you needed to. And you'll notice this is a collapsible wagon I use for delivering groceries for Walmart. I keep it in here all the time. This is a nice hard plastic, so it'd be, you know, your, if your feet bang on it or whatever, not going to tear it up. Easy to keep clean. You've got your uh, door handle and lock and your window controls. I think I already said that. Cup holder on both sides in the back. Now, these seats work pretty good. You operate the, uh, now this little latch here, you can raise and lower the headrest. But this one right here, built into the side of the seat is how you lower the seat boom just like that another thing I like about this vehicle 
if you lower both seats down you got a nice big flat area for hauling stuff on the crv these fold down but then they're the thickness of the seat up, up like this so there's like four to six inch rise now there's another way you can fold the whole seat forward to give you a flat area but i like this better because it's just one button operation and you can also pull on this and push back on the seat and the seat will tilt back another thing i almost forgot about it's got the center armrest and uh, wagons in the way and it's got two cup holders built into it so the people in the back can put their beverage there it does have a roof rack on it i haven't uh put any side rails back and forth but i may who knows here's the back of the vehicle <coughs> excuse me i'm assuming that's for uh one of those little hooks you screw in there in case you need to pull it out of a ditch or something now right in the center under the subaru emblem is the button to release the tailgate it's electric you just push on it <coughs> excuse me it's right there it does have a backup camera which i really like the crv doesn't have a backup camera so it's kind of annoying when you're trying to back up in somebody's driveway you'll have to forgive the mess back here but uh this is stuff i use for my home de depot deliveries today i'm going to be putting if it comes it was supposed to be here yesterday i'm going to put a hitch on this vehicle and that's what i'm going to use for towing my trailer i did install the wiring harness i made a video on that it's on my youtube channel it's pretty easy to do it's uh maybe a 15 minute job most basically you just take everything out of the back there's a couple clips you take out for a piece of foam over there 10 millimeter bolt up to the front there's a tie down Let's see if i can show it to you try it up there anyway they already have it all pre-wired you just have to buy this kit plugs right in there it's really easy to do and another thing i see there's an oh another 12 volt outlet back here i didn't notice got some things for tie downs i don't know what i don't know what that's for not sure it's got a nice i forget the name of it Harman Kardon, really nice stereo. That must be a bass speaker back there. And it also has a sunshade, so you can pull that and it latches in these clips on the sides. That'll uh, keep people from seeing what you're hauling. And then you can take that out if you want. You just pull it to one side and it'll pop out of there. This one came with the rubber mat, protects the carpet underneath. And then underneath the carpet, there's a little handle right there. You can lift that up. There's more storage underneath there. Uh, what else can I show you? It's got the hydraulics. Now, if you ever have trouble with any vehicle, it's not opening and staying open. It's really easy to replace these hydraulics. I've done it a lot. Usually they just snap this part. Ooh, that's kind of tacky. There's a little ball and... Uh, this little metal thing has a ball on the end of it that snaps into here. Same thing down there. Usually you can just take your hand and hit it hard and it'll just pop right out of there. Sometimes they have a metal clip on them you need to pry off. But Also, when you go to shut your tailgate, there's a handle right there. Now the Honda has, I think it's more in the center, and then it's got a indentation here and over here for it. But... Uh, if you go to shut it that way you don't have to grab the outside of the vehicle it might be really dirty or wet or whatever you can just use the handle and shut your tailgate it's got nice looking tail lights um, tells you over here that it is symmetrical all-wheel drive and that's what makes subaru better and different than others because from what i researched it gives you about 60% power up front and 40% in the back all the time. A lot of four-wheel drive systems switch the power from wheel to wheel or axle to axle as needed. But this one is always kind of in four-wheel drive, I guess. So it's not like on-demand four-wheel drive. It's like always working four-wheel drive. And... 
You know, I see the... Oh, I never noticed this before, but... I have a feeling these cross rails right here, you unscrew them, and then you can put them in these holes right here. This is what I'm guessing, because I don't know for sure, but it looks like then you have built-in cross members. I never noticed that before. That way, if you want to put a kayak or whatever on the roof, it's not sitting on the paint. Now, this is the passenger side. It's basically the same as the driver's side. Cup holder, little storage, handles, window control. See if there's anything on the front passenger side I didn't. Well, you got your electric seat. Not as uh, fancy as the driver's side, but this is for the back of the seat. This is for the seat itself. Up and down. Oh, it's not up and down. It's just forward and backwards. Okay. And again, you got your vents. Now, these will help keep your side windows defrosted. This one's for the passenger. And you can turn this back and forth, up and down. You can turn it on and off, whichever you want to do. There's another place that got damaged. I kind of wonder if they had an animal in here that either was clawing are chewing on the upholstery and I also read or saw in a video that the sunroof has some kind of UV protection to keep it from fading out your interior this one does have tinted windows I can't tell you whether it's factory or aftermarket but uh, it's got a nice tint to it so it helps block the sun now yesterday I did a bunch of wheel stuff, different tires and wheels. I took the old wheels off the CRV, had snow tires mounted on them, and I cannot believe the difference between steel wheels and aluminum. Because I had a set of aluminum truck tires with wheel, uh, truck wheels with tires on them, and I had the tires taken off so I could sell them separately. And those aluminum wheels are so much lighter than steel ones. I'm assuming those are aluminum. Could be wrong. I haven't taken one off yet. But they kind of look like they might be aluminum. I'm going to go ahead and pop the hood just so you guys can see under the hood real quick. I had a hard time when I looked at the car trying to find the hood release. But it's right there. You see this little thing, whatever that is. There's your hood release. And then once you get that popped, kind of come to the center. And there's a little bar there. Pull that to the your left. And this one has hydraulics, so it'll hold it up. It doesn't have to have a hood prop. One thing I like about Subarus, the oil filter's right there really easy to get to you can just unscrew it let the oil well it's the nice thing about this the oil is always going to drip out of it when the engine's off it's going to run down so you're not going to have a big mess this is where you add your engine oil your batteries over here this is your windshield wiper fluid engine coolant radiator cap alternator air conditioner engine oil dipstick uh, I'm assuming this is probably the power steering maybe I'm not sure about that oh let's see yeah I don't know uh, this is for power steering fluid I'm pretty sure yeah I don't know all that stuff I'm kind of new to working on Subarus of course this is where you add your brake fluid now, he told me he had a little bit of a problem with oil consumption, so I'm going to keep my eye on that. And I guess from about 2010 to 2013, someplace in there, they had a little bit of problem. I guess they put in a timing chain instead of a timing belt, so that was good. And they pretty much eliminated the head gasket problems. But there's a little bit of oil consumption problem. So, make sure you check your oil on a regular basis. And maybe change your oil every three to four thousand instead of six thousand so you don't end up running out and ruining your engine because you get low on oil 
can cause a lot of problems. Well, that's about it for underneath the hood. Oh yeah, something I haven't done. I'm gonna check my air filter, which is right here. Just pop those clips off. This is your MAF sensor, mass airflow. It monitors the air going into your engine. If those things get dirty, they can make your car run bad. And it's pretty easy to clean them. Take those screws out, pull that out, well, disconnect it. They have a special spray to clean them. Don't use brake cleaner. It's, you can ruin them. Your shocks, struts are right there. Right there, easy to get to. The Honda, they're back in here. So you gotta take a bunch of stuff off to get to them to replace them. Kind of a pain. Um, I've been watching a lot of Subaru videos and once you get used to working on them, they're pretty easy because everything's pretty accessible on the top here. Not hidden and buried. And So I'm kind of looking forward to having this. Now I'm sure there's a cabin air filter on here. Not positive, but I'm assuming. Probably in the glove box, behind the glove box. So I'll check that, make a separate video on how to check that and change it. I'm going to check the air filter, but this thing was completely serviced with new spark plugs engine flush uh, what else new battery a couple months old oil change so should be good to go well thanks for watching guys i hope this helps somebody out that maybe has a subaru or thinking about buying one i don't think you can go wrong as long as you pay attention you know don't get one that's leaking oil or been wrecked and put back to back together back together poorly Check your tires, make sure they're wearing evenly. You should have the same amount of tread going all the way across your tire. You might have to get down here on the ground and look at it, but if, if it's worn really bad on the inside or the outside, you got an alignment problem or strut problem, something. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope this helps you out. I've reached a thousand subscribers on my channel, so I appreciate that to everybody. And if you want, subscribe, like it, feel free to comment. Because I'm sure some of you guys know a lot more about Subarus than I do. Thanks again.